Cisco Firepower Threat Defense 622 Integrated Routing and Bridging. So we're going to build uh, a scenario here where you might have a branch office and you want to have a couple of hosts connected to the firewall directly in layer two. So we'll build the BVI interfaces, the NAT policy, access control, and we'll do some testing. So right here, we can see we have two hosts, right? We can see the gateway is 10.198.1. And what I'm going to do is ping each other. Now, because we're directly plugged into the firewall at this point in time, we're not actually going to be able to communicate directly with each other. Okay, we need to build policy in order to allow this, which is, is pretty cool, right? Now you have switched ports, and now you're able to make sure that there's policy between those devices if you choose to do so. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to add a bridge group interface. And we're going to give this a name. And we'll give it also a bridge group ID. Now we'll grab the interfaces that we are using. In this case, it's uh, 03 and 04. And we'll give it an IP address. Now this is going to be the gateway. So this is 10.198.1 slash 24. That happens to be the inside network. And you get a warning here to let you know that the, the interfaces that you added, we're going to remove some of the configuration that may already be on that interface. So it's just giving you a warning. All right, so now we have that interface created. Now let's go through and um, grab our interfaces that, that were assigned to it. So we'll give this a name of inside one. And we're going to create a new security zone. So give it a name that's meaningful to you. In this case, uh, inside BVI zone. And make sure it's enabled. We'll do the same here for gig 04, but we're going to name it inside 2. But we're going to give it the same security zone. Now, what did I do there? I forgot to enable the interface, right? So make sure that you remember to enable the interfaces. So click save. All right, nothing's happening at this point until you deploy, but we've got this base configuration done for the interfaces. And now we're going to go in and configure the NAT rules. So we're going to do manual dynamic NAT, and we're going to say the inside BVI zone to the outside we want to NAT, okay? That's the zone of interest. And then we're going to grab any IPv4 in this case. We could be very specific and only grab the network that's inside. And we're going to translate that to the outside interface. Now, I already have the outside uh, configured in routing, the, the static default route outbound, etc. Right now, I'm just configuring the inside um, interfaces as if the uh, firewall was a switch. So the other thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to modify the access control policy, right? Because now we've got this new zone that we can leverage. So I already had this one uh, threat inspection with IPS and malware inspection, but we need to come in here and, and just be a little more granular. We don't have to, but it, 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 you should, right? And we're going to grab that BVI zone. And we can see we've got the same elements as normal, right? Even though that's a layer two switched interface, uh, we still have the ability to do all the same things that we've done in the past. Now, I've grabbed the inside uh, BVI zone to the inside BVI zone. Now, this is going to allow me to communicate with the devices, right? The hosts themselves on that switch network that's directly connected to the firewall. So we can do some advanced inspections. So that's pretty cool, right? We've got application control. We're going to enable some logging here. And again, placement of the rules is always important. In this case, the, it's fine where it is. And here's a quick summary. We can see that we're doing IPS and file policies on both inside to outside as well as the inside to inside, right? So if you're communicating directly, we're also um, running uh, advanced inspection on it. Now what we want to do is obviously save that and deploy it and push it out. Once that's complete, uh, we can start with some testing. So let me bring up a couple of boxes here. We can see that ping still failing and, and very shortly we're going to see that, uh, that the ping is successful. All right, there we go. So now we know we can communicate with each other. But again, remember, even though these are in the inside, ho in, inside network, 
uh, and their independent hosts on that environment, we're still running policy across it, right? So um, we can still do IPS and advanced malware and other controls. Now, if I ping the gateway, this is the gateway on the internet side. You can see I was successful on both sides. And here I'm just opening up just to make sure that I can get to the outside and to the internet. And you can see, you know, the default pages that come up here. So that's perfect, right? That's uh, what we expected. You know, it didn't take very long to build this configuration. And now here I'm just looking at the event logs, right? Again, you can have a lot of logging taking place. So, uh, you know, edit search is going to be your friend here. Come in here. I'm going to do initiator. Actually, I could have done initiator and responder, but this is fine, right? You get the idea. Uh, and here I'm going to pick the zone. And this will allow me to focus my search. And you can see very quickly we've got an allow. There's my uh, one of my inside hosts out to the uh, outside. And that's it. It's a pretty simple configuration. Within six minutes, we've got integrated routing and bridging.